So on worksheet 8b, we are going to be creating functions. So I'm going to give you a graph. And they're drawn on what looks like dot paper. It's like another way to do graph paper. Um, so I'm going to need to trust your young people eyes because my old lady eyes can't see this so hot. And we're going to first write down the transformational formula of the original function. And then we're going to kind of pull out the clues as we see them. So you are responsible for knowing on your test on Wednesday, you're responsible for knowing what type of function you're looking at and what the function like the, the transformational formula is and how to get all the pieces. So this first equation is this parabola and a transformational form for a parabola looks like this y equals a and then the body is x minus h but because it's a parabola that's being squared plus k so we actually had this question on your previous exam that you guys took from me like a, about a week ago so you should be able to identify the vertex pretty easily just by looking here's your vertex and that is at what is that at negative three zero your young people eyes confirm that's at negative three zero and then there you have to pull up another ordered pair now technically you guys can use any ordered pair you want that's on the graph they went ahead and labeled the ordered pair for you of negative two comma one fifth uh, me personally i probably would have used this ordered pair here zero two but whatever uh, just to stay consistent with our notes let's go ahead and use this ordered pair so this is a random x y ordered pair that we're going to be able to use and this of course is our h and k so you're going to plug things in where they go. The random ordered pair's y value was 1 fifth. I don't know a, that's why we're calculating some stuff. And then x minus h, so the x value of that ordered pair was negative 2, minus your h, which is negative 3. So instead of saying minus negative 3, we'll do one of these things. Plus k, which is 0. So we saw this, this on our last exam. Some of you guys had a little bit of trouble with manipulation of how to actually solve for a. If there was a number here, you first should have subtracted or added this number over, but since it's zero, it's not gonna do anything. And then you should have figured out what this value was. So negative two plus three is one, one squared is still one. So one fifth equals your a value, but now you go back and you plug in the pertinent information into the formula. So formula is y equals, you just found a was one fifth, and then x minus h would be x minus negative 3, so x plus 3. Don't forget quantity squared. And then if there was a k value, I'd expect to see it out here, but in this case, that's your final answer. So these questions have a bit of work. And your assignment that you're being given is just to do like half of the problems on the worksheet. So that's why we did that, so you didn't have to have 4,000 pages of work. Um, one of the first things I'm going to do when I check your homework check is I'm going to look at that particular worksheet and look for all your work. So please don't pull the, I left my work on another sheet of paper, because you don't get credit for that. Um, and for goodness sake, don't, you guys can't tell me things like I counted the slope. Okay, slope is only for linear or absolute value, which are technically linear functions. So slope on non-linear functions is not a thing. Okay, we gotta calculate it. <clears throat> all right, number two, that is a line, so there won't be much work here. Because I know a line, the formula we generally use is y equals mx plus b. So we should be able to identify the y-intercept and the slope by carefully counting. So this is the y-intercept. Pretty sure that's at 6. The slope, however, it took me a few tries to get the correct slope because there's a lot of ordered pairs going on here, guys. So I'm going to count from this ordered pair down to this ordered pair. And I think when I did that, I got negative 5 over 2. Can someone confirm that our slope is negative 5 over 2 with your young people eyes? Does it move down 5 right 2? Okay, good. So y equals, we just found out slope was negative 5 over 2x, and then the y-intercept was up at 6. So linear functions, yeah, they should be pretty easy, not a lot of work. Then equation 3 that's an absolute value function. The ones that have, they do have, ver they have a vertex, but they have linear branches because they're really just a line that's been, part of it's been reflected. Um, so equation three is an absolute value graph. The transformational formula for that is A, and then it's absolute value of X minus H plus K. And this time, because the branches are linear, you don't really have to do a lot of work to find A value. You can count the slope. But can you guys look at the shape of this graph? Is this going to be a positive value or a negative value for A? It's going to be negative. So I'm going to go ahead and jot down Y equals, and then I'm going to throw a negative sign in front of the function because I always forget that. Sometimes kids in Algebra 2, depending on which branch they went to, 
they would tell me the slope being positive instead of negative when it clearly is negative. Because one branch is positive and one branch is negative. So you got to be careful there. Uh, go ahead and count branches, guys. What's the slope for rise over run going from the vertex to one of the ordered pairs on one of the branches? Is it negative 3? Okay, so negative 3, A value. And then X minus the H and K are the vertex. So what do we got here? 5, 1, 2. Is it 5, comma 4? I'm hoping. So absolute value of X minus 5. And then plus 4. Is it not 5, 4? Am I totally wrong? I've been wrong before today. No, we're good. All right. It's what? I think it's 5, 4. It's okay. These are, I do not like dot paper. I think this worksheet was uh, written, well, actually, I know this worksheet was written in the 80s. Uh, because that's when we use this type of thing, but also the teacher that wrote this worksheet and painstakingly plotted all these points has not worked here for many decades. So, wonderful man. It's been a while. Yeah. Like back in my, back in my day, it's one of those. Yeah, I had blocks. They were great. All right. Um, here we go. Equation four. So, new set of graphs. Look carefully at who four is, and that's this guy here. Anyone have a thought as to which function that is? There's a little cheat sheet at the bottom there. Cubic. It's the cubic. Very good. So the transformational form of it is A, and then X minus H, this time body to the third power plus K. So the transformational formulas of all your functions are the same. You just got to figure out what the body is. Is it squared, cubed, square rooted? What's going on? All right. <clears throat> so um, there's no vertex, but there is a center wiggle point, not the official name of it. Usually this guy was at the origin, but he's not at the origin anymore. He's been shifted. Let's figure out how far. One, two, three, four. Uh, was that four, negative two? Yeah, go me. All right, so I do need to figure out the A value. Now, I might be able to make a guess, but that's not good enough for pre-calc. You actually have to calculate it to confirm that it is what you think it is. Um, so you're going to choose another ordered pair somewhere on the graph. It could literally be any ordered pair. I think on your test... We were very clear as to which ordered pairs we wanted you to use. Like, we even labeled them. That was mostly for selfish reasons because they're easier for me to grade when you do that. So give me an ordered pair on this cubic graph that you'd like to utilize in this next step. Like, you can use this guy or this guy or this guy or this guy down here. Anything. Which one you want? No one wants to read the dot paper. Is that our problem? 5, negative 1. So it looks like you're going for that one. I like it. So using the ordered pair 5, negative 1, we now have an x and a y value we can plug in. So y is negative 1. Don't know a yet. Oops, this is supposed to say to the third power. I don't know what it wrote. And then x from that ordered pair was a 5. We just found out that our h was 4. Quantity to the third power, and then plus k, which is should have been a minus 2, but whatever. Okay. In order to solve for A, you should start by adding this 2 over here. Now, at the same time, you might want to simplify this mess. So you have 1 equals A times 1 to the third power, which is just 1. So if this was anything other than 1, I would divide both sides by 1, but I don't need to do that anymore. All right, Y equals... Do I need to write down a 1 for A? I really don't. So X minus H, which is 4, that is to the third power, so it's a cubic function. And then instead of saying plus a negative 2, I'm just going to go ahead and write minus 2. So these are super fun. Woo. Whole worksheet of this coming your way. Mm -hmm. All right, number 5. <clears throat> Anyone have a thought as to which function number 5 is? It's the square root function. So the transformational formula is, surprise, surprise, A. This time the body is square rooted, so x minus h, and then plus k outside of that. So again, there's no vertex, but there is like origination point of square root graphs. They're supposed to start at the origin, so if you can figure out where he is now, that's your h and k. So, oh my gosh, I can't see that. Is that negative 8, negative 6? Yeah? Cool. All right. 
any other ordered pair you'd like to use off of that square root function, tell me who it is. It literally could be any of these, anything. Negative 5, 1. That works for me. So if you went and chose a different ordered pair and already started this question, don't worry, we're going to end up at the same spot because this is a function, so all the relationships for A should come out the same. All right, y value is a 1 from that ordered pair. I do not know A yet. Why did I use blue? But my x value from that ordered pair was a negative 5. Um, boop, boop, doo, 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 minus, where are we at? There we go. h value is a minus negative 8, so I'll change that to a plus 8. And then plus k would be a minus 6 back here. All right, I'm going to add the 6 over. We get 7. Oh, gross. Is that not really... Did I... Hmm. Did I do something weird? Nope. Okay, this answer was not supposed to come out this weird. Because this is about to come out super weird, isn't it? Real weird. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we're about to get an a value of 7 squares to 3 over 3. And if we used another ordered pair, like I did in first hour, the a value came out to 4. <laughs> They're actually really close. Um, I think what happened here is I was with you. Whoever said five, negative 5, 1, I assumed that was that ordered pair as well. Apparently, it's not quite negative 5, 1. It's something else. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You guys don't have to keep writing. Let's, let's just, let's use that ordered pair, because this one I know works out nicely. Um, on the test, I will label the ordered pair for you, like specifically what it is. And if, if it's, here's what I will do. It's either going to be labeled with an ordered pair somewhere on the graph, or... There'll only be two ordered pairs, like, drawn with points. And then you know which ones to use, because they're the only two that I put points on. Okay? And it'll be an obvious one. It's, apparently, that other ordered pair was something else. So, sorry about that, guys. This is negative... So I can't count. Six. Is that negative seven, negative two? Yeah? yeah? All right. Let's see how that turns out. A little differently, I bet. Let's find out. That's better. <laughs> All right, so still adding 6 to the other side, getting a 4 equals a, and then it's times the square root of 1. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the square root of 1 is just a 1, so turns out a is 1. See, that's what we're supposed to get, apparently. Okay, so 4 times the square root of x minus h. So x minus your h would be x plus h. And then plus k, so I'm just going to write down a minus 6. That was really gross. Sorry about that. That was not supposed to be that exciting. <clears throat> My bad. I think that happens on a couple other points. Like, I think when I originally keyed this one, I used um, some other ordered pair that apparently was not actually part of the graph. So, lesson learned to your teacher. We're going to make sure we label the points on the test. Number 6. What kind of function do you think that is? Put your little legend at the bottom there. Can you see it's a cubed root function? Um, can you tell it's kind of backwards though? So there's going to be a reflection. You guys don't actually have to worry about that. It's just going to magically appear through your math. So this will be fun. All right, so the cube root function, well, surprise, surprise, starts out with a. This time it's the cube root of x minus h and then plus k off to the side of the body. So just like with the um, cubic function, the cube root function has a weird little wiggle point in the middle. So that's what would have been the center of our graph normally at the origin, but this guy's been shifted, what, left one, and is that down four? Gosh, I hate dot paper. All right, so there's your h and k, and I need to use an ordered pair. Uh, I know from experience from last class that if we use this ordered pair, life is going to work out nicely. So this ordered pair is 
Zero, negative six. So the y value is negative six from that ordered pair. I don't know a yet. But we have the cube root of the x value from the ordered pair is zero. But then you're subtracting the h, so subtract a negative one. We'll do this. And then plus k for us would be a minus four. Okay, so all the pieces are in the right spot. Let's start solving. We're going to add the four over. So we have negative two equals a times the cube root of 1, which is just going to be a 1, so that's pretty boring. I'm not going to divide by 1 because that's silly. Turns out a is negative 2, and we anticipated a coming out negative, so this makes sense for us. So y equals negative 2. The cube root, make sure you get a, little, a third, a tiny 3 in the index of your radical. And then x minus h. Remember, minus the negative 1, this is going to turn to an x plus 1. And then plus k for us would be a minus 4. Whew! Good times. All right, so um, on your assignment for worksheet 10, it does say just to do the evens. I'm referring to the even equation numbers. So if you look at worksheet 10, there's like equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. So you're doing equation 2. I think they're circled, aren't they? Oh, cool. Go Hofbauer. She's so organized. <laughs> I did not think to circle them. <coughs> All right, guys, could you please um, find worksheet nine? Just a few minutes with worksheet nine, and then you guys can have the rest of the time for work time. This worksheet was made by that same wonderful person who really liked dot paper back in 1987. I'm making up that date. I don't know when it was written. These are very hard to see. This poor worksheet. Well, you guys got to remember, like, back in the day, way, like, way before my time even, like, there weren't photocopiers like we have. They had ditto paper, which is very different. And since there's no electronic copy, like, at some point in history, we scanned this in. <laughs> and then it keeps getting photocopied from now until the end of time. But this is such a good worksheet. We love it. Mostly because I don't want to have to redo it. All right, so um, they drew this wonderful piecewise function. That's great. Uh, and then a lot of things happen to it. So every question, they're going to have some transformations that occurred. And if I look at this screen, and you guys can jot this down if you want somewhere, but let's give some words that associate with these notations. So when you, these are actually the same thing. One has a 2 in front of the function, and one has a 3 in front of the function. What do we call that when you throw a number like that in front of a function? I heard someone say vertical stretch. Yes, yes, yes. So we've seen vertical stretches before back in our Algebra 2 lives and again in pre-calc now. So what happens when you throw a negative in front of the function? Yes, a reflection how, though, because now we have multiple reflections. You can say a vertical reflection, I heard, or a reflection over the x-axis. So what about when you put a plus 7 inside the function by the x? How does that move? What does that do? I heard left. Very good. You guys weren't tricked by that backwards thing. Anything in the function with the x is always opposite of what you would traditionally think. So when you first learned about these transformations, we kept telling you guys, think opposite, think opposite. <clears throat> so keeping that in mind, what happens when I throw a 2 inside the function? Instead of out of the function, now it's affecting the x's. So what's going on here? It's a horizontal. Now this is up for debate. What do we call this? Because when it's a 2, it's going to change your x-intercepts by a factor of 2. But is it going to expand them out or is it going to contract them in? It's backwards, so it contracts them in. So you can call that a horizontal contraction. Compression is the word I think your book uses. So this is a horizontal compression of 2. So it's going to shrink all the x-intercepts by a factor of 2. So if it was an x-intercept at 10, the new guy has an x-intercept at 5. So this one's written kind of weird. It says x over 2. If you would rather think of this as f of 1 half x, you can. But it kind of goes along with the previous one. But instead of it being a horizontal con 
compression, what would a one half inside do? A horizontal expansion. Yep. Or you can call it a horizontal stretch. That's fine. So this is a horizontal stretch is a good word for us. Expansion, I think, is what your book uses. So a horizontal stretch of a factor of two. Super confusing. <laughs> All right. We'll talk about the absolute value ones in a second because those are awkward and weird. You already told me what that is. What about when you have a minus nine off to the side here? What does that do? Down nine. Yeah, that one we knew. So we'll come to that. Okay. So on my slides, I have the original kind of next to all of them. So once we get to the back of the worksheet, if you don't want to keep flipping your worksheet around, you can just look at the screen, but you can't really see it. So maybe you just got to keep flipping here, guys. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm noticing nothing's been shifted right, left, up, or down any, but it does seem to have <coughs> some stretching happening. Did the Y's stretch or did the X's stretch? The Y's are stretching. So remember, we pinpointed there were two, two functions up at the top that had a vertical stretch of 2, and the other one had a vertical stretch of 3. Your job is to figure out which one is it. So you get your bifocals out, and you start counting. It's 2. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty clear it's 2 once you pick out one point. So this guy is 2 f of x. So whoever wrote this worksheet did that fun thing where there's more functions than there are graphs. So it's not a game of like match everybody up. There's going to be extra ones left over. Like for instance, 3f of x, we're not going to use that one at all. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Okay, so this is clearly, back in the day you called this flipped, but we're calling this a reflection across the x-axis. However, there's a couple of functions here that have reflections across the x-axis from our, our worksheet. There's, where's it at? There's one right here that has also a vertical compression of half. Um, later on, there's one that has a reflection with a down 9 shift. So which one makes more sense for this picture? That one half compression. Very good. So it's been vertically reflected, but then it also has been vertically compressed by a half. And you could confirm that by looking at the ordered pairs, or you could just open your eyeballs and look. Doesn't it kind of look half as tall as it was? Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> well, this one's fun. <laughs> so this is one of the absolute value ones. There's f of absolute value of x versus absolute value of f of x. And your job is to figure out which one it is. One of them is like makes a lot of sense to me, and the other one is like weird and boggles my mind. So if you think about f of x as being your y values, this one is making any negative y values now positive. So it takes all of your stuff that's below the x-axis and it throws it up to the positive part. Is that what's happening in this one? Yes. So this one is, whoops, absolute value of f of x. So not that one. This next one, let's see. So that weird little bump part is now over there. So I feel like we have a reflection across the y-axis this time. You guys sometimes call that a, a horizontal reflection. So is there a function here that has a horizontal reflection? I think I'm hearing it. I'm sorry. Maybe not. We'll see. Oh, it hasn't been reflected, Abruzzo. What are you talking about? You should you should just yell at me. It's just been moved. <laughs> I was really excited for that reflection one that's coming up. That's all. Shut up, Abruzzo. <laughs> I love how polite you guys are. You're like, I don't think that's quite right. No, it's super wrong. They just, it's a rigid transformation. They shuffled it to the left. Left? Yes, left. So, um, is there anything here that all that happened to it was shifted left? Yeah, that one that you were trying to politely talk to me about. Thank you. All right, so f of x plus 7. And there's no vertical shift. There's no stretching happening on that one. My bad. Oh, this one. So, that's weird. All of a sudden, it just developed symmetry. That's fun. Um, here's what's going on. This is the other absolute value one. Let me talk to you about this for a second, guys. When you take f of absolute value of x, 
it pretends that the negative x values never existed. So it takes all of these ones that had negative x values and it erases them. So they're like gone, <laughs> but it has to give something. So all of these original inputs and outputs are now reflected over here as well. They're copied and pasted to the other side. So it creates this beautiful symmetry. So that's why this one is f of absolute value of x. Those are super weird, super weird transformations, those absolute value ones. Okay, oh my. So again, there's like magic symmetry that popped up, but it's not quite what happened um, to the previous question because there was a transformation before they erased the negative x values. You see what they did? They reflected this guy across the y-axis, and then they took the absolute value of everything. So they popped this over here, and then this part popped over here, and this part got erased. So this is f of absolute value of negative x. Which part of that was the reflection across the y-axis? Which, which part of that component reflected it across the y-axis? This guy right here. So the negative inside the function reflects things across the y-axis. Very good. <clears throat> huh? Oh, absolute value bars. I should make them a little more exaggerated. My handwriting. Oi. I just had a conference for my daughter. And I was like, isn't her handwriting awful? And I was like, oh, wait. Mine's terrible. <laughs> Give the third grader a break. All right. Letter G. Oh, let's see if I can do one without messing up. Let's see. Now, first thing I look for, because something's been contracted or expanded. First thing I look for is, is the x, is it the y or the x that's been contracted or expanded? So I noticed that little bump is just as tall as it always was. So they're not stretching or contracting the y's. So they must be doing something to the x's. So technically, I should be looking at all the x-intercepts. Originally, I can't see that far away, guys. Is this one originally at like negative 10? And I notice now it's at negative 5. So it's been horizontally contracted or horizontally compressed. Which one of those contracts horizontally? Is it f of 2x or f of 1 half x? Good. I could even trick you. I was trying to. And you notice the person who wrote this worksheet purposely put those both on there. So it's this one, not that one. Everything inside the function does opposite of what you think it should do. It's so annoying. <clears throat> so this must be the other one. Is this one half x? Has it expanded all your x-intercepts by a factor of two? Okay. And I think they wrote it as x over two, but if you wanted to rewrite it as one half x, you sure can. All right. What we got going on here, guys, I, okay, finally I see a reflection. <laughs> I also feel like it's been shifted down, and it happened in that order. They reflected, and then they shifted down. So is there one that has a vertical reflection, something across the x-axis, and shift down? <laughs> yeah, that guy. Negative f of x, and then down 9. <clears throat> okay, I'm not going to mess it up this time. It looks super different, but it's only been rigidly shifted to the right and down. So don't go all Algebra 2 on me, guys, and get backwards. Which one shows a right and down shift only? So I heard f of x minus 5 is right, and then down 6. Remember, everything in the x's is opposite of what you think. Very good. All right. I'm going to stop the recording so I don't mess up anymore. Do your homework.